What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We had the Chucky Lozano to San Diego breaking news yesterday. So that delayed uh, MLS 5 Aside this week one more day. And here we are on Tuesday. We are ready for another edition of MLS 5 Aside. Let's start on the positive side. Stock up. Denny Buanga. So a little bit later, I'm going to talk about something that I had wrong. I want to say that I had this right, and I've been saying it week after week. Denny Buanga is going to be fine. The LAFC attack is going to be fine. Denny Buanga is going to be fine. Blah, 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 blah. Told you he's back. Now he has six goals. Granted, understandably, three of the goals have come from the penalty spot. But guess what? Penalty goals are still goals as well, right? Bowanga is still underperforming his non-penalty expected goals versus goals. Uh, he's fourth in the league in non-penalty expected goals. Uh, but overall, he, he's up to 7.5 XG and has six goals. It's pretty good. Like, that's, that's not bad at all. Um, the leaders in expected goals this season, Bowanga's first at 7.5 with six goals. Then it's Christian Benteke. Then it's Dejan Jovalich. Four, Lionel Messi, who's always going to overperform because obviously he's an alien. Uh, and five, Chicho Arango. All the other four players in the top five do have one penalty attempt. They've all made theirs, except for Dejan Jovalich. Again, Bowanga has three. Um... This isn't a Daniel Godzlock situation where he's going to have two-thirds of his goals from the penalty spot. Um, and I'm not going to say he's the best finisher in MLS from open play, because like, that's obviously not true. But he's going to keep on getting a ton of chances, and he's going to keep scoring goals. So again, I am not worried about this LFC attack. I will say, the defense, a little bit more worried than, than I was maybe a month ago. Um, they beat Portland Timbers 3-2. Portland Timbers have a very good attack, but this is the third game in a row in which LAFC have conceded multiple goals. They haven't kept a clean sheet in more than a month in that 5-0 thrashing of Nashville SC, whose attack has been, let's just say, not exactly the best in the league. So that's something to keep an eye on moving forward. Um, again, the LAFC attack is going to be fine, and it is fine. It is very, very good. Denny Buanga is going to continue to be very, very good. He, he seems to be back in form. Again, Olivier Giroud coming in the summer. The, the attack is going to be one of the best in the league. Now we have to focus on the defense when we're talking about LAFC. MLS 5 aside, stock up, stock down. Number two, let, let's keep it positive here. Let, let's, let's wait a little bit to go negative. Look, I know I can be stubborn, both professionally and personally. I understand that that's part of me, and, and I'm probably never going to change that. I can work on it, but, you know, it's never going to be too different. Um, but I'd like to say one of my strengths, but I'd like to think that one of my strengths is that I'm good to admit when I'm wrong, particularly on sports takes, because this world isn't doesn't have to be that serious. We don't have to uh, kill each other over uh, crazy takes or, or differences of opinions. I've sat here the better part of the last month from power rankings to other videos and saying, I don't believe in Austin, all of this, right? Like, stock up Austin FC. Big respect to their game plan against the LA Galaxy in their 2-0 win. Big respect to their performance and the result. My gripes with this team has been those three things have rarely been aligned since uh, the 2021 season, 2022 season, sorry, when they were overperforming all metrics. Um, they were naive in the past in that they would still try to hold the ball high and dominate possession and do everything else, except they didn't quite have the players, they didn't have the defenders that could defend and transition well enough, and they just got carved up again and again and again and again. Against the LA Galaxy, and now this is the second week that they've done it in a row, they, they beat Houston Dynamo last week. Two weeks in a row, they've just completely conceded possession. They had 40% this week. They had, um, I believe, closer to 30% last week. It was the correct decision. It was the correct game plan. And the players completely bought in, which, again, is another thing I wasn't totally sure of. Like, when your whole identity is dominating with the ball, it can be difficult to kind of turn that switch the other way and be like, okay, we're going to defend for 65% of the game or whatever. And, you know, be really diligent, responsible, track your runners, do everything. Hey, Sebastian Driussi. How many times does Driussi recover the ball in his defensive third? It's been really, really impressive. And again, I just want to give kudos to that. And I'm ready to say that I was too far down on Austin FC over the last two months. And I think that's going to be rectified in the next power rankings. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll give myself an, another, another uh, jab when we do that about me being wrong, or at least a little bit wrong, <laughs> the stubbornness coming back. We'll see how it ages. But I want to say right now, take nothing away from Austin FC. This wasn't luck. This was um, an awesome game plan and awesome execution to beat the LA Galaxy, who are one of the best teams in the league. So that makes it four wins in their last five for Austin FC. Um, Alexander Ring has been very, very good. And that brings me back. I need to give myself a little credit. Last year, I was saying how stupid I thought it was that he was playing in central defense. Um, and, and look, just play your best players in their best positions and, and good things happen. Biro has been a really strong signing, um, even though he started, I think, half of the games. But every time I see him play, I, I like what I see. 
another good point. They're not as reliable on Sebastian Driussi as they have been in the past, which like which is obviously a, a good thing in general. But I take it as they can still hit another level because Sebastian Driussi is one of the ten players who could go supernova and carry a team on his back. If Sebastian Driussi starts overperforming his expected goals, or again just goes out of body and and, and goes nuts, this team's going to win even more points. So. Seeing the foundation of the last two weeks and what they're doing defensively, responsibly, game plan, all that other stuff, like, and they're they're picking up these points and results. When Spruce, again, like he, he scored the late winner against San Jose, he's been good. He hasn't been bad, right? But my respect for Sebastian Spruce is like I know that there's another level attainable that few other players in this league can hit. So Austin, like, you, there's still another level that that is possible to find. And again, I, like that's another positive side and, and the optimism. All right, time to go stock down. Got to do a little negativity. Stock down, Aaron Bupenza. The Cincinnati designated player was benched again, and Cincinnati won again. Um, is there any danger that they would be pushing him out in the summer? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot that can change before then, during then. Um, I will have a couple thoughts on what he can do still in, 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 on a positive side, but taking things as they are right now, he does not look the same this year without a more traditional center forward in Brandon Vasquez or somebody else in the profile like that next to him. Off the field, which has always been the bigger concern, um, he's been suspended by Cincinnati and Gabon, the Gabon national team, in the last year. Not great, right? <laughs> um, but again, like everybody knew that there was some risks on that side of, of the world with Aaron Bupenza. What is surprising is his, his lack of on-the-field um, output this year and, and that he looks just kind of so off. Really quickly, again, on the on the, uh, off-the-field stuff, I was talking to a sporting director of another MLS team that looked into signing him, and they came close, and they did all of their due diligence background stuff and was like, he's he's an awesome player. He's absolutely worth it, talent. like for Like, he would be an incredible player in MLS. We just cannot take the risk on, on what we think about him in terms of his volatility off the field. So, like, this is a known thing. Um, again, not that Cincy didn't do their due diligence no too, but I think Cincy just, um, again, I think it was a uh, roll the dice where, like, the upside here was too big to ignore. And, like, the culture that they've reset and everything, like, if it was going to work out, and, and again, it still very well could work out. Like, I, this isn't definitive. But if it was going to work out, since he believed, it would kind of be there. Like, don't want to say anything like heat culture or any of that crap, you know, the Patriot way, you know, when, when they were good and stuff like that. But since he well and truly believed that they've completely fixed the culture to where it was obviously a weak, a huge weakness in their first three years in existence. So now it's a huge strength. So, again, things could still work out for Amber Penza. But right now, things are not going well. Last year, he had six goals and two assists in like 850 minutes across all competitions and looked really, really good. This year, he has just three goals in 750 minutes, and he just looks much worse. The idea or, or the thought was he was going to look better after having a full offseason, after having time to uh, really integrate with the team. He, he, by this summer, he'll have played more games with FC Cincinnati than any other club that he's ever played for, which is not a good sign considering he this summer he'll have been here a year, right? Like, that's not ideal, and that kind of goes to where the issues and, and the worries and, and, and the potential problems that, that came with the signing. The end of last season, he looked really, really good. And well and truly, I thought that he was going to be one of the, the handful of best center forwards in the league this year and a golden boot challenger. Golden boot ship has probably sailed just given how far away the other players have gone, but like he can still be the elite goal-scoring option for one of the best teams in the league. Again, like I'm cautious... Like, I want to critique and point out the things that aren't going correctly right now and things that aren't going well, but I want to be careful that I'm not portraying this and saying, oh, it's done, it's over, right? Um, Aaron, like, there's still a scenario in which this works out. But I've had people asking me for a couple months, like, is there any chance that Cincinnati offloads me pens? And I kind of, like, laughed those off when I would get those replies even a month ago. Right now, it seems more, I guess, possible than than anything uh, than it was a month ago. And again, that is no inside information. That is nobody telling me anything. I have not asked any questions uh, on this front. Um, that is just like de uh, deductive reasoning in, in what's gone on over over the last month. Because if they need to sign a DP forward, he's the one that's going to be leaving. It's not going to be Nwobodo or Ulucho Kosa, obviously. Stock up. New York City FC. Has Nick Cushing saved his job? That's three wins in a row for NYCFC five games unbeaten and their home form is very strong and this is something that Nick Cushing and, and other folks at the club said when they got off to a slow start in the beginning of the season again it wasn't a Montreal road trip 
But their first two games were on the road. They looked very bad in those two games, and it was like, hey, just wait until we go home. Like, that's, you know, we need to win our home games, all that stuff. And they, and they didn't start so well at home either, so that's when the, the, the panic button w- was starting to be hit. But they are doing much better now. Again, they, they've studied the ship. Everything that I liked about this team, that, that within their spine, this, that central midfield trio in particular, Santi Rodriguez has indeed been that top option on a good team, and he's helped, like, push them, drove them forward to win games. If Bakrar or Mijatovic can consistently score goals, this team becomes really, really dangerous. Right now, until that happens, they're, I think, going to be a very talented, really solid, like, mid-table-ish team in the Eastern Conference. But they have the upside in if... And, and, and even, like, we can take it away from just the center forwards. We can expand that to the wingers as well. Like, if, if there's another goal-scoring option that becomes consistent over the year and takes that jump, like, this team should be challenging, you know, for a home playoff game in the East. Their play style has been interesting. Um, I'm surprised that the XG per shot is so low, but what I really like is that their passes per defensive action has gone way up. Like, my biggest criticisms of them under Nick Cushing has been they've looked, like, timid or or slow defensively, right? Like, it didn't seem like there was a lot of urgency. Getting back to that kind of, like they want possession obviously but the counter press was what was so good under Patrick Vieira in particular um again the possession wasn't exactly the same under Ronnie Daly and uh, <clears throat> the counter press was really really good under Patrick Vieira and Dome Trent wasn't quite the same under um the, the the possession numbers weren't quite the same under Ronnie Daly um and again like I know that this team wants to control the ball at their heart but the other side of that is the counter press and and immediately recovering the ball or recovering the ball in advantageous spots so seeing those numbers going up this year i think it is very encouraging all right two more let's be quick stock down new england revolution um look i don't want to pile on right like there isn't much more to say like it's i I feel bad for people at the club and 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 fans and everything else the results are what the results are the performances are the performances are they just got ran over by Lionel messi and inter miami this weekend again they were dealing with um a bad case of the flu a few players were out uh, a few players were throwing again that that's all well and good but they're bottom of the east it's been a very very difficult season what i would say is is this rock bottom because that's the positive spin here if it is hey we can only go up and hey now is the time to buckle down and, and start winning points um but what if it isn't rock bottom and, and i think that that's a real fear too so again um, not trying to pile on whatsoever here, but this is what it is. I, this wouldn't be a um, particularly good video if I only did stock up. Well, I will end on a positive note. Dylan Brower returned from his injury this weekend, and that is very good. That is very important. I would give him a little bit of time, uh, fans, in terms of expectations of him being like Dylan Barrero again, right? Like this was a major injury. It's been a while. He's going to have a little bit of rust, but very, very encouraging to see him back on the field. Last one. Let's end on a positive again here. Stock up Minnesota United. Back-to-back wins over Charlotte FC and Sporting KC. And those aren't, like, the most special results of all time. Um, though, I will say it, it is really not easy to beat Charlotte at in Charlotte. Um, but if Minnesota were a fraudulent team, they would have slipped away over those two games. They had a fast start and overperformed early in the season. Then they lost to Philly, drew to Real Salt Lake, and lost to Houston. Two of those three games were at home. That would be where a bad team that was just overperforming, being like, all right, like, and, and you know, they would have dropped points in at least one of these two games. But they didn't. They picked up six points, and again, instead of letting the momentum, letting that slide continue, they stopped it right there and picked up two wins. Minnesota United are not the best team in the West. I don't see them as top-level contenders. But man, they are very competitive, and they are going to make you earn everything you, you get from them all season. And that is extremely encouraging and important and positive for a team that is in a little bit of a, but the, more than a little bit of a transition, right? A new sporting director, new head coach, Emmanuel Reynoso is AWOL again, right? That's been their most important player for the past five years or, or whatever. So, again, I didn't have high expectations coming into the season for this team. So, I hope that I didn't sound disrespectful when saying they're not, I don't see them as top-level contenders. Straight up, they're not. Like, what they've done is very, very good to start the season and is worth, you know, celebrating a little bit in, in terms of, like, hey, they're on the right path and... Hey, even if they were in like last place right now, you could I'd be able to say, oh, you know, hey, it was a transition year. Like, yeah, this sucks, obviously, but things are moving forward. Um, you know, this isn't who they're going to be. They're winning points while transitioning this roster, while transitioning the culture and doing everything else. The next four games are against Atlanta, LA Galaxy, Portland Timbers, and Colorado Rapids. Very, very curious to see what happens in those four. All right, that'll do it for MLS Five Aside Week Ten. 
we are about to hit May. We're about to get some of those midweek crazy games in, in, in the late spring, early summer, everything else. Leagues Cup is on the horizon again. There's a lot of stuff coming up. We are through the first quarter of the season for, for all of these teams, and we're on our way. We're on our way to more meaningful games. We're almost to the summer. We'll have some transfer stuff coming up in the next few weeks just to uh, set the table for the summer transfer window, both incoming and outgoing. Stay tuned.